Hello, I'm recording just a very quick video to um, go over the content for your second section test. Much of this is the same structure as the last one, so um, I don't think it needs to be elaborated uh, on all that much. It's due Monday, um, November 12th by noon, uh, so I've extended that deadline for you as well. Um, it's the same format, the same policies as the last time. Um, you missed the assignment. You know that from experience now I'm very forthcoming with extensions, but they require um, a, a conversation. Uh, you're responsible for what you submit. You're responsible for submitting it. You're responsible for making sure that what you submitted is the right file, that sort of thing. My responsibility is to grade it. Um, so, uh, and uh, I, I suppose I should mention too, um, especially since there is a great temptation with Hobbes to plagiarize, don't, um, I will find out, um, and uh, the sanctions can be um, quite severe. Uh, I'm good at finding out and kind of a tough cop on this. So. Um, and uh, you know, course policy on this is that um, you don't fail the question, you don't fail the assignment, you fail the course if I find that you've done this. Um, lately I've been a little bit more um, willing to give a warning, but um, it, it, that's, that's generosity on my part, right? So um, it, it, technically I have to pass these all on to the Dean of Students. Right? That's just what my contract stipulates. Um, so you have two books uh, that you've read. It's um, sections one, two, and the first section of section three of the Nicomachean Ethics and um, the, the assigned readings for Thomas Hobbes. I've given you video content on both of these as well um, that you are also uh, responsible for. So, same format as the last time, um, four questions, a minimum of two sentences, or two, two paragraphs uh, in response, full sentences, and I mean full sentences, uh, because point form responses are far too big, um, and uh, it, the bare minimum um, to constitute a paragraph is three sentences. And right, so, um, that said, if you um, give me the minimum, then um, your, 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 what you reap will be minimal. Um, I've just noticed a typo, um, five points each, uh, totaling to 20, not 30 points, so um, I will adjust that. Uh, but nonetheless, they're five points each, so you can do simple math, five times four is 20. Um, so, uh, Two questions on Aristotle and two questions on Hobbes. This should be fairly straightforward um, by this point. Uh, the first one engages the function argument of all things that have a function. The good for those things is to perform that function well. What do we call it when we perform our function well? We call it virtue. So how does Aristotle arrive at his definition of happiness? It's an attack activity of this whole in accord with virtue. It's the human good, right? So um, that that should be just basically, um, it, I, I want you to analyze that argument. It should be fairly straightforward. It's encapsulated. It's an important one. Um, and I, I can't say, see myself saying that you know what Aristotle's talking about in the Nicomachean Ethics without knowing that argument. Um, it is a basic, basic, basic argument. Um, it's, I use the example of the beer store guy. Uh, Aristotle uses the example of a carpenter. Uh, you know what the function of a carpenter is to make good things out of wood, uh, to make things out of wood. A good carpenter is one who excels at this. And how does the good carpenter excel at this sort of thing? Um, by exercising virtues. Right? Um, so it, keep in mind though that Aristotle is looking for something more substantial than a task oriented um, or an object oriented kind of uh, account of the function. What he's trying to do is distill a general human function. So um, a, a, an important part of your response would be to assert what Aristotle says the human function is, and you can find that in um, my Aristotle video, or in the book, right? So um, uh, that is question number one. 
Question number two in book two of the Nicomachean Ethics, Aristotle defines virtue of character and discusses how it's developed. Define virtue of character. Just give me a really clear definition of virtue of character and then briefly discuss how it's developed. How, how do we develop virtue of character? Do we learn it from a book? No. How, then how, how, do we, how do we develop virtue of character? No. Then I direct you to uh, book two, section four of the Nicomachean Ethics, where he identifies three requirements for genuine virtue. Um, it, that passage, but surely actions are not enough, on page 22. I want you to dis discuss each of those requirements. Note by discuss, I don't mean list, I mean discuss. Tell me what he's getting at with them. So um, that is five points as well. Right, so you're doing three things there, defining virtue of character, telling me how it's developed, and then engaging with the three requirements. So, straightforward. Right. Chap uh, uh, question number three, um, in chapter 14, Hobbes distinguishes between the right of nature, which you know is to use your power to preserve your own life, uh, and the laws of nature. Um, define each, right? Um, it, Hobbes, uh, on the very first page of chapter 14, defines each. Um, now, note that I don't need, like, bloody all the laws of nature, I, but you might engage with the first law of nature, which rests on that calculation. Uh, a war is not good for anyone, and a state of peace is in everybody's best interest. Right? The laws of nature are basically quick and ready calculations of self-interest. Right. Now, in the same section, and this is where students get confused, Hobbes introduces the idea of a covenant. Why are covenants important to Hobbes' argument? Now, if you look at the remaining laws of nature, you'll find that, that basically they are uh, contract law, covenant-making law, dispute resolution when it comes to agreements um, and sharing of material possessions and that sort of thing, right? Um, so. Uh, uh, covenants and 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 the laws of nature all aim at producing these convenient articles of peace, right? So, talk about that, right? That's the idea. Right. Now, the final question: um, discuss the covenant that gives rise to the Commonwealth introduced by um, Hobbes in Chapter. 17. Be sure to cite the covenant itself found on page 227. Um, page 227, the covenant reads, I authorize and give up my right to govern myself to this man or to this assembly of men on this condition that thou give up thy right to him and authorize all his actions in like manner. So, um, I want you to actually quote that. The reason I want you to actually quote that is because for years I didn't require it and for years I was getting responses that didn't quote it, that we're talking about covenants maybe generally, we're talking about the commonwealth maybe generally, uh, without really referring to the covenant that I asked you to discuss. Quote it, then talk about it, right? Because basically it creates a power, an institution of power, right? That's more or less what it does. Now, more specifically, I want you to discuss how this covenant establishes, uh, which establishes sovereign power, sovereign power, breaks down the distinction between public and private good. So, we find the covenant in chapter 17. We find uh, in chapter 18 a rather chilling uh, discussion of sovereign power. Um, and then in chapter 19, what Hobbes does um, is basically compares um, the idea of um, a monarchy with an oligarchy and a, de a, a democracy, right? um, or an aristocracy and a de democracy. Right? And he comes down very clearly on the side of a monarchy. One of the reasons he does this is because when you have to share power, people calculate their private interest over and above their will to produce the public good. Right? 
this is what happens when you have to share power. Right? But what Hobbes is arguing is that with this co covenant for the sovereign, at least in the person of the sovereign, to seek privately for their own ends is to promote the public good. They're the same thing. Right? He breaks down that distinction so that, at least for the sovereign, seeking to get more power, powerful for himself automatically produces a general state of well-being for the con commonwealth. Right? So that's, that's what I want you to talk about there. So um, a total of 20 points. Um, and I talk about my assessment criteria, um, you know, like if you could comment, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, if you have any questions about this, shoot me an email. Uh, I also have um, office hours on Thursday um, from 12.15 to 12.45. Um, stop by then uh, and we can uh, talk about this sort of thing. Um, look forward to reading your responses. Don't plagiarize. Um, two paragraphs minimum. Uh, for each of your responses, uh, and uh, I'll look forward to reading your responses on Monday. Thank you.